give you some basic information and then we'll kind of go into some of the stuff that we're uh, working on. Uh, so facility staffing and population, we have 458 trainings today. 368 of those are over in our program side. The other 90 are over in the GP, which what we've done there is, is a lot of our program completions that still have some uh, time left to serve. Uh, we've moved a bunch of them over there and that seems to be working very well kind of a maintenance portion of their uh, treatment as well. Um, right now we have 49 officers and 79 support staff for a total of 128 employees um, housed here at Bill Johnson. Uh, we do have several vacancies, so if you know anybody looking, you know, we're hiring, of course, officers always. But we do have two case managers, one records officer, and an, an education position as well. We're looking for a teacher. Um, start pay for correctional officers are right around $3,546 a month plus a $1,000 sign-on bonus right now. And we do, or do, they're doing something kind of new this year too um, where they're allowing part-time positions. So if somebody's looking for a part-time job, uh, they have to do 30 hours a week, but we pick up all the uh, benefits. So you get health insurance and all that, which is one of the great things about working here, we have really good benefits. Um, education, uh, since January 1, we've had 51 trainees receive their high set certificates. 58 have completed pre-high set, and 23 have completed literacy. So we're pretty proud of that number right there. Um, one of the things that we are transitioning to, uh, Trent and I started talking about, I don't know, a year ago, that our curriculum was starting to get a little dated. Um, and we actually started the process to maybe write our own, but we came across um, some really good curriculum that the uh, feds are using, actually. And it's called RDAP. And I'll pass some of these books around so that you can see them, but I'm going to let Trent talk about this. But this is really great curriculum. So, Trent, you want to talk about that a little bit? All right, so to start off with, we have been using the same curriculum since about 2009, 2010. And before then, this we did MRT to start with at the facility. 2009-10, we went to what was created by Northwestern called CDRP, Cognitive Behavioral Relapse Prevention. So what we did was we took information from SAMHSA and also TCU and kind of merged together and then created this, what we've been operating on for the previous 13 years now. And we've had excellent success rates, an excellent turnout from it. However, we started looking at the curriculum we had and realized that the information hadn't been updated since uh, 1999 to 2001. So we started sitting there thinking, okay, we have a new generation of population coming in. We have a new generation of employees as well. And so a lot of the terminology and a lot of things have changed. It needs to be updated. So as what I'm saying, we started that process of really looking and digging in. Uh, programs in Oklahoma City was like, well, we might have one that you can try. And we kind of look at each other, it's like, this ought to be good, right? So we uh, we went ahead and said, sure, bring it, let's take a look at it. So we spent a lot of time looking through the books that are in front of you. These are their workbooks. This is in our facilitator manual. And so we spent a lot of time really looking at them and, and just the information in them, the way that they're designed, they really just kind of just bring attention to them. They really pop. So I, I kind of got behind it and I changed my mindset of do we have to change to let's take this opportunity to see if there's going to be some success behind it. Now before I go much further into the RDAP, I just want to point something out to be honest with you. I don't think it matters what curriculum we use here. I think the quality of staff that we have and the ones that are delivering the groups and just the way that it operates in general is going to change. Curriculums. So you can put anything out there with us and we'll make it to the best that we possibly can and we'll still see success. Um, so with that, this curriculum is a nine book series. And I, I brought eight books because uh, we've used all of the first book, which is Community. So the way in the structure that this writes and the way that it's written is, which by the way, RDAP stands for Residential Drug Abuse Program. Um, so the first book is Community, and it's all about getting inmates oriented to therapeutic community. And it's very, very good because it's an orientation from our high structure, our, our uh, Charlie's part, into therapeutic living. So they're already getting that. And so we've had 65, is that correct, people so far? Or is there more than that now go through? There's about 90 that have gone through community now. Okay, so 90, 90 people have gone through the community book. And it, it's a 
change of pace from what I've seen previously. I will be walking down the sidewalk leaving the programs building, and I'll have guys that are leaving the community book asking questions about how do we get into this treatment, how do we do this, and they are getting ready to make some serious changes. Then you move into the first book there, which is uh, opportunity to change. And the first process of that is, is how do we reduce the barriers to your success? And so it, it really kind of motivates them and gets them going in the thought process of my life can't stay the same as what it is. And so as you go through each book, and then you get into the next core four books, it's basically all about thought process. And it starts off with take time to think. Slow down. Stop. And so to start off with that book and those, those thoughts, it's, it's a common... Anybody seen uh, The Love of the Game movie? You know, the Kevin Costner movie? And basically, it starts off with a part in there that says, clear the mechanism. Slow down. Think. And then it gets into irrational belief systems, their, their thinking errors, and it just breaks down everything. And we uh, had somebody new sitting group with me today, and I've had a lot of people just come sit in and see what it's like, and I, I got a really rough group to start with. And they, they, they are sitting there, and they're interacting, they're a part of it, they're talking about it, and Today they go, one guy even goes, man, i got to give up my gang life. i got to give up all this stuff. And they're already in this process of change. And I'm like, oh, well, that was easy. <laughs> At what point do I do my job? You know, the curriculum's there. They're opening up and talking. But it's actually fun to be a part of that because it, it's less stress, more conversations and things like that. And so The buy-in for this has been tremendous with the, the inmates that have started taking this. It's, it's really interesting, the interaction that most of our other programs are kind of scripted. These are not so scripted, and so it requires you to give feedback, and it requires you to be a part of it. So I'm hearing it from staff. Staff love it. Inmates are loving it. So I'm kind of, we're, we're excited to have it. And when we started looking at this curriculum and how he mentioned it was built into the therapeutic community, that is a huge part of what we already do. So it was almost like these books were built for us. Um, and it just fits in really well. We're having to adapt it a little bit because it is not open-ended, which because of the numbers and the volumes of people that we put through here, we have to adapt it to be open-ended. But otherwise, it's, I think it's a great piece of, of, of educational curriculum, and we're, we're pretty excited to have it. And then when we, we sat down as a program design committee and we started trying to figure out a policy, because here's the part that most people are kind of shocked by is, is we're right now the only ones doing it. We have a, what we call a sister prison, trying to mimic what we're doing, which we have a, we're going there tomorrow to take a tour of it. And so any warrior is gonna to try to mimic what we do here to the core, because we're kind of the guiding light on this. And I kept asking programs, so say something, well, what about this, what about this? And they go, we're hands off on this. This is, you guys design it to fit your need. And so when we sat down to write it, what I really liked about it was, it always seemed like what we did we knew every part was inter interconnected somehow, but we made sure we wrote that into this policy. And so we're looking at four phases that we see guys go through when they get here. You have orientation or high structure. From there, they go to therapeutic community. Once they kind of get regimented, got to get used to that, and now they're starting main treatment. Main treatment is the delayed sentencing program. It's our program, our dad. It is reentry, or part of reentry, or starting that process. It's chapel services, it's education, and it's career tech. Now, during this time, they're also at jobs and employment and learning all these things. And then the final stage, once they kind of complete that, that they go into is full-blown reentry. And so it takes everything and it puts it all together and it just stair steps one after the other, and it really, really builds. And it's starting to show in that. So by the time they're done, and the last thing that they're actually finally addressing is pro-social lifestyle choices, behaviors, and things like that. But we don't even talk about those until they get to thinking. And so it really, really builds on that. And big push right now is motivational interviewing uh, with the cognitive behavioral therapy following up. So it really focuses on them. And, it, and what I like about it is, is I can break down the sessions that I do for any counselor, and they design their own, and they pull. And it says, if this is your style of treatment, you can do this, 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 and this. If this is yours, you can do this. And they write their own session, but then they present it all in different ways so it meets that group and meets that individual. So I'm pretty excited about it. We're, like I said, having really good success. We're sharing it across the state. And, you know, hopefully it's not just feelings. We'll start, uh, hopefully in the next couple of years, start doing some recidivism study on it and make sure what we're doing is working. And that, that, that really is the key. But like I said, I really don't have any worries about that right now just simply because of the staff that we have that, that do the programs and things. So. It's not fully implemented yet. We have to phase out one to bring
bring in the other, but all our new incoming inmates are we are moving to this curriculum. So I still have to by about two hundred March or April. We, we think about March Good or day. April we will. The vast majority will in. turn over in December and we'll really kick up quite a few groups of our dad then and then the next group will be about March April. Will be the final. Is a, it's the goal. Anyway, uh, thank you very much, sir. Any questions on it? seen in the news. Um, the agency has something new as far as a uh, notification system when it comes to um, escapes or any other kind of big, big event. Um, I kind of learned a lesson when we had our little walk away out here about notifications and what a good system looks like and what it doesn't. Um, the agency as a whole has moved to this thing called Orange Alert. Um, and it's, if you go to the DOC's homepage, um, kind of Right towards the top, there's four buttons. That fourth button is orange alert, and you just sign up for the notifications. You text, um, I think it's I think our code. Our code is BJCC, and the, the opt-in alert is 77295. Um, and that's on that page. When you go to it, our, our code and everything's right there. You just text BJCC to it, and they'll add you in. And, um, but that's how we will be sending out notifications in the future. So if you want to be notified of, of anything that goes on here, be sure and sign up for those. Um, the instructions are pretty easy on the web page. So anyway. Um, chapel events. My goodness, Chaplain Clap has got all kinds of stuff going on. So I'll let you talk about some of our events that we have planned coming up this month. Yes, ma'am. Uh, on the 9th, we're doing our annual Veterans Day service. Uh, we've been doing this for several years now. We invite, uh, we invite uh, all of our staff that are veterans, all the inmates that are veterans, which we usually have between 9 to 12 right in there that are veterans. And then all of our staff, and then all of our volunteers that are veterans, and then even uh, people that are in the community like the American Legion Post to come out. And we host a service for them. And uh, this year's speaker is Jeremiah Broderick. He is the Prison Ministry Director of Crossings Community Church in Oklahoma City. This church has made a massive investment in chapel programs around DLC. They're actually building chapels now. And uh, we, this year we have secured crossings through our, our volunteer groups. They're doing one once a month services for six months. And then they're going to expand to the campus format. Uh, and they'll actually start a campus church here and they'll live stream their services right into the chapel for them to be able to watch a live service uh, from their services. So they're, they're investing a lot into our, our prison. We're just so far away from Oklahoma City that we were sort of the last ones to start getting them. And then at the end of the month, we have uh, Deep Heart. Deep Heart is a worldwide ministry team that goes around the world uh, in prisons. They're actually going to pick up five prisons in uh, Oklahoma DOC. Uh, this tour, they've never been to Oklahoma, and so I've been in communication with them for about three years trying to get them here, and they're finally coming. And so we're one of the five that they're going to come here, and they they provide all kinds of different forms of media to uh, inspire and minister to the inmates. Uh, it's going to be a whole new big event similar to what we did back in June with some of the slumber coming here to our yard. And so we're trying to find bigger things to bring to the yard to help our men, our, our inmates to minister to them. Our biggest need right now is Prison Fellowship. Prison Fellowship has got a, uh, given us a complete green light for what they call their Tier 1 Academy. It runs a, a year long and it is cognitive, uh, behavioral classes, but based uh, in a scriptural Christian standpoint. And uh, we've got several of those academies around the state that are extremely effective. And so President Fellowship wants to move here, but we have to have about six new volunteers to connect with them. I've gotten one so far. And that's what my biggest need is right now. Uh, you've got to understand that over 30% of our yard are, are registered as nothing. They have no faith whatsoever, they say. They're not necessarily atheist or agnostic. They're just nothing. And that's the key of this generation. Uh, that is what they are. 
So we're trying to help them to connect to their faith to try to help them with their uh, with their recovery. I just got through getting all the certificates ready. We have over 100 certificates going out of uh, participation to inmates, over 100 of them. So quarter percent of the art are getting certificates of completion for NAAA, Celebrate Recovery, uh, and those type of recovery programs. So that's that's what we do every month in our chapel. So. Yeah, chaplain's really good at what I want to say. Pushing me outside my comfort zone with some of these, so, but uh, I gotta admit, I thought you were nuts when that when that six-inch blue mohawk um, come on the yard. <laughs> I was like, oh, what I got myself into here. But they were wonderful. Um, Very good. And their testimony was just out of the world. I mean, it was just you know that's what I get from being judgmental, but. Uh, uh, the, the heavy metal music was something that was very new to us, uh, but the trainees loved it. Uh, I still, people still talk about it. That I'll talk about how they love, especially that little bitty girl and the noise. Wow! Um, but it was a wonderful event. Um, I chaplain sent me a uh, your video clip of the one that's coming at the end of November, and I I like look at it like they're almost like street performers. They are. Um, they're a lot of different formats. Uh, oh, they're pretty, pretty cool, I think. Yeah. So. Rap, uh, magic, uh, ballet, ballet uh, river dance. Uh, I mean, they do all kinds of things. Yeah. Bring it down to the dance. Yeah. I think it's going to be a, an interesting event. So, we'll have a thank you, Chapel. Um, I think that's about all I have. Uh, I I think that's about all I have for uh, any kind of updates. Um, we do have uh, one thing that we are working on, Brenda and I are working on. We've got the um, check, uh, our matching funds. They sent us, what is the name of that? Yeah. Um, it's a distribution, endowment distribution. Community Foundation um, gives their yearly distribution. Um, Freeland has been uh, under the weather. So we are uh, trying to figure that out. He's taken care of that for many, many years for us. So we're having to punt a little bit and, and uh, get that done. But I have. To. Yeah, I always tell at the office I wanted to. Like, in my next life, I want to be a private investigator, but I decided. No, I don't. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, we'll get that figured out. And get that deposited, and um, our chapel fund is still, I think, around about fifty-four thousand dollars, give or take. Yeah, I think so. so um, and I think our chapel is still in, in very good shape. Um, maybe beginning of next year, I would maybe like to talk to y'all about maybe updating some of our furniture that's in there. Our chairs are starting to look pretty worn. Um, but we'll, uh, next, next time we meet, we will meet in the chapel so that you'll get an opportunity to see that and, and we'll make some decisions at that time. Our next meeting will probably be the uh, first part of the year. It'll be probably March or April. Um, what I was thinking was is that we will also probably be doing a high set graduation along those at that time. So I may just dual purpose that and uh, make our citizen advisor and our high set uh, graduation the same day. Um, that way you guys can come, come see that too because that's a pretty that's a pretty cool event. Um, we have a lot of our, our uh, trainees that leave here um, with their high set, but not go through that graduation program. I've started doing cap and gown pictures, and they just think that's the greatest thing ever. Um, it's pretty cool to see how proud they are of what they've accomplished, especially that. So we try to try to make that happen for them. Um, do you have any questions for us? Anything the community needs that you can think of? Well, come up with something later. <laughs> Y'all know how to get a hold of me. Um, I know PPWP has always been a big question. Um, ooh, PPWP is tough right now. And I, maybe I just need to give you guys the, the list of qualifiers. It is not easy to qualify for PPWP. We're very, very particular about who we put out into the public because uh, we want the, the safest way to do that possible. And it disqualifies a lot. And then all the classes and things that they're in also disqualifies them because treatment comes first. Um, we are able to give Northwestern, I think, three 
on and off, but we have to swap those out just because of some of their scheduling. Um, but we continue to look at that. If it comes a point that we can put those back out with Alice City, we certainly are going to. Um, we're just not, not able to at this point. Um, but we're, we still look at that every day. So, staff, you guys, what have, have I missed anything? I have not covered it. Okay. Well, I thank you for coming. Um, I leave an open invitation if you want to come to the Veterans event or if you guys want to come to the thing on the 30th, you're absolutely welcome to do so. Just give us a heads up and we'll put you on the schedule and get you, get you escorted over there. Veterans Day services at 1030. 1030 on the 9th? On the 9th. On the 9th. On the 9th. That's pretty nice. Um, Carmen Andrews' son comes in and um, plays taps for us. He's not going to come this year? Oh. oh okay. Oh, yeah, he's in college now. But it's, it's always a really nice event, though. So, well, if that's all we've got, thank you very much for coming, and we'll see you next time.